the topic here is immunology and the question came here it's uh, on gate excel q 2018 and the question number is 11. the question is stated as among the reagents given below which one of the combination of reagents will not break the disulfide bonds in the immunoglobulin molecules and the four options are given reduced glutathione dithiothiazol sodium dodecyl sulfate and the fourth option uh, and the fourth uh, that is uh, agent is given is methionine and they have given four options on the basis of this so first uh, why i have chosen this question so to give you a basic idea about the structure of the immunoglobulin molecules so first uh, since you uh, this question may be very easy for some of you if you know uh, the main structure of immunoglobulin or at least basics of immunoglobulin and what are these agents uh, how how they function but let me give you a brief overview of what is an immunoglobulin molecule so the best example of an immunoglobulin molecule actually the immunoglobulin molecule belongs to a superfamily known as the immunoglobulin superfamily so in the immunoglobulin superfamily there are two kinds of domains which are mostly observed observed so one is the igv domain which is the immunoglobulin variable domain and another one is the igc domain which is the immunoglobulin constant domain so the best one of the best example of a immunoglobulin or sometimes this antibody is also called as an immunoglobulin so the best example is an antibody structure so let us look into it in your left hand side which is marked as a this is a crystal structure of how an immunoglobulin looks like okay and if you try to deduct that how it looks like and you to try to uh, you try to uh, make it into a cartoon then it will look like this where it will contain two light chains and two heavy chains okay and this uh, we will come into details that what these light chains and heavy chains are doing and there are as i mentioned that there are two kinds of domains which are present in this antibody structure one is this igc domains and another one is the igv domains the variable domains and the constant domains okay so but if you look into I means this is how the structure is actually in the crystallographic form but to actually visualize it in an easy form most of you have seen this structure of an antibody where you see there are two variable domains and these two these two variable domains and the constant regions they are actually identical for a single antibody this actually increases the avidity of an antibody means that a particular epitope two epitopes can be recognized by a single antibody what is avidity avidity means the overall strength or overall interaction strength of a uh, means of when a antibody is binding to the antigen how many antigens it is actually binding at a single time or how many epitopes it is binding at a single time that decides the avidity whereas the affinity means that a specific epitope is binding to a specific binding site present in an antibody what is the specificity of that interaction that determines the affinity of that interaction so in this antibody why it has two arms it is actually to increase the avidity of the antibody then it is there is a variable region and there is this constant region normally this variable region is responsible for the binding to its respective epitope so what is epitope epitope means a sequence of amino acids or the region of an antigen antigen is something which is not means not our uh, which is not previously recognized by our body so that is new to our body and that can be anything and that is an antigen so these antigens have specific sites which our antibody can recognize okay so those sites which an antibody is actually recognizing and mediating its function those sites in the antigen is known as epitope 
and the corresponding region which is present in your antibody where this epitope will bind this is known as the paratope okay so this uh, this variable regions are actually responsible for binding to their specific epitopes how what is there in this variable domains and what is differing the, them these variable domains from these constant domains that we will be seeing okay so this is the basic architecture of an antibody structure now what is been asked in the question is about the disulfide bonds so this heavy chain and this light chain these are actually linked by an inter disulfide bonds interlinked disulfide bonds and also these two heavy chains that you see this region the which my cursor is pointing out this is known as the hinge so this hinge region is very useful for an antibody so that it can actually give a lot of flexibility to the variable arms of the antibody so that it can bind to its respective epitopes in different angles it is giving it a very a flexibility so in this hinge region mostly poly uh, proline and glycine sequences are found which actually gives a more flexible structure to these antibodies and this hinge region is connected by two again in uh, uh, two disulfide bonds okay and uh, means two two disulfide bonds and this each of the domains that you see here this ch1 chl vl ch2 ch3 each of them are actually connected by intra disulfide bonds so in an antibody there are actually 12 intra disulfide bonds and and another four is the inter so total disulfide bonds in an antibody structure is 16 okay so in this question they have asked that there are some reagents which can actually reduce these disulfide bonds so some reducing agents will be required so that it can reduce these disulfide bonds and make them a single uh, means polypeptide chains okay so we will come to the question again later now since we ask that what is the difference between the variable and constant domain let us dig into it more okay another important thing that i uh, forgot to mention is this this constant region this is actually why it is called constant because this is constant for a single species there is no variability which is present in this constant region and this constant region is actually re responsible for mediating its biological function okay so this variable region is responsible for recognition and the constant region is re responsible for its biological function okay now let us look into what is the difference between these domains so now if you look into it so i have said that there are two types of chains present light chain and the heavy chain and there this we are considering the light chain constant region and light chain variable region okay so this variable regions actually contains this igv domain okay whereas this c domain or the constant domain have this igc type of fold so what is the basic difference between them one of them we, you will see that in an igv domain so this is a beta sandwich like topology which means that there are two strands means there are two beta sheets which are made by anti parallel beta strands and they are actually connected by a disulfide bond between their b and f, f strand okay so this is a typical uh, structure of a ig super family so there will be two uh, sheets one will be front sheet one will be your back sheet so this red one which is marked here so this is your back sheet for the igv domain and this is your front sheet and this front sheet and back sheet is connected by a disulfide bond in between the b and the f strand of this igv domain okay and this disulfide bond is actually very necessary for holding the or maintaining the structural integrity of this beta sandwich topology so that is present in all ig domains but what is differing in the igc with the igv is that there are two strands absent in the igc 
they are this extra C prime and C double prime strands which are actually found in the IgV domain. So this is a basic difference how you can tell structurally that whether this is an IgV domain or an IgC domain. This IgV domain will always contain this C prime C double prime strands. Okay. So what this extra strands is serving and why it is actually giving it a characteristic so that it can recognize a specific epitope whereas this IgC domain cannot. So let us look into it. So this region which I have mentioned this CC prime loop this is actually there are three complementary determining regions which are present in an IgV domain and one of the important complementary determining region which actually has some variable amino acids for each specific antibodies that will actually recognize a specific antigen or a specific epitope. So these variable regions have this complementary determining regions and this CC prime loop actually contains this variable this this complementary CDR. So these CDRs are actually responsible for recognizing a specific antigen. So that's why this IgV domain is different from the IgC domain which does not contain this CC prime loop or this CC prime strands. Okay. So this is the basic difference of the IgV and IgC. Now let us look into that means uh, th there are some more information that I can give you which can actually help you in if, if any question come from the antibody structure. So this we mentioned about the light chain and the heavy chain right. So these light chains are found there are two types of light chains which are found kappa and lambda. Whereas these heavy chains, they are of five types. Okay, so we will discuss about that. And on the basis of these five types, these constant regions are also named as such. So we have, if you if you have a basic background of immunology, then you would have heard IgG, IgM, IgA, IgD, IgE. Okay, so all this this name, this nomenclature is done on the basis of the constant region of this antibodies which uh, which are actually this C mu or C means as I said that there are different five types of heavy chains present on the basis of their heavy chains there this name nomenclature has been done. So we will be coming back again into that in some of the future slides. Now let us actually solve this question so which is very easy now. So only thing that I will try to mention you here is that for solving this question you have to know that this dithiocytol and this reduced glutathione. So these are actually reducing agents and they actually are used for for reducing that disulfide bond and breaking those disulfide bonds which are present. And as you know that sodium dodecyl sulfate and methionine. Methionine is an amino acid it does not have any role in reducing the disulfide bonds and also the sodium dodecyl sulfate is a denaturing agent and it will not specifically break the disulfide bonds. Okay, so the option here will be they have asked that will not break the disulfide bonds. They have highlighted it. So the answer for this question will be let us look into it. So the answer is the DTT and reduced L-glutathione that is this GSH are reducing agents while the combination of sodium dodecyl sulfate and methionine will not break the disulfide bonds in the immunoglobulin molecules. The disulfide bonds that we discussed the inter as well as the intrachain disulfide bonds because methionine is a sulfur containing amino acid and thus is involved and thus is involved in breaking disulfide bond thus is not involved actually thus is not involved in actually breaking this disulfide bonds okay so this is not a reducing agent so methionine will not actually break this uh, means this way here it will be uh, methionine uh, it, it is not involved actually not involved in uh, the breaking of the disulfide bond. Okay, so that's why the answer of this question will be your R and S. This one will not be involved. Okay, 
So for your reference, uh, you can go through these two courses. These are very good courses. Uh, the first one is of, uh, from IIT Kharagpur. Uh, so Professor Shudip Kumar Ghosh and Professor Agnyo Ganguly. So they have an NPTEL course. So you can visit there and, and also Dr. Sachin Kumar from IIT Guwahati. He is also running an NPTEL course on cellular and molecular immunology. So if you want to brush your concepts in immunology, you can look into these two courses.